Um, so the finishing touches are being put on the static site and they expect to start moving administration um, beginning January 27th. Uh, families won't move in until February. Um, and we have, I just wanna do a little plug before I introduce um, Jennifer and Amanda. We do have two Love Your Neighbor Day projects at the Family Promise site. Uh, one that I am leading that will be setting up and organizing the kitchen, the pantry, the bathroom and the bathrooms. Um, and second, Warren is leading one uh, that will be putting together the beds, tables, and chairs. And the link to sign up for those is on the front page of the WCPC website. So uh, I'm very excited to introduce Jennifer and Amanda. Jennifer Martin is a case manager. Uh, she started working for Family Promise uh, in October of last year, 2021. She previously served as the Family Promise uh, church coordinator for three years with Christ Church United Methodist in the Woodlands. Uh, she recently retired from the U.S. Probation Office after serving 20 years with the federal government as a U.S. Probation Officer. Amanda Plymate is in Finance Administration. Uh, she started working for Family Promise in June of Would last you say year. That? She is a lifelong Montgomery County resident, and bringing she is bringing her financial expertise and administrative skills to serve Family Promise. She's proud to be serving the community and okay. on the Montgomery County team. So Jennifer, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Awesome, well first I just wanna say hi and thank you for the opportunity. So I am Jennifer Martin, I'm the case manager here at Family Promise and we're excited to show you this new beautiful building um, that as she stated, we'll be moving in our offices on the 27th and then families will soon come thereafter in February. So I'm gonna also turn my camera around so that you can see Amanda, she's helping me today. So say hi to Amanda. And then here is our building. So this is where everyone will enter at 109 Commercial Circle Drive in Conroe. This is, I'll just so give you an idea. So all of this on that side is our family dorms. And then when you enter this side, this is the administrative offices. So this is the building from the outside. All right, well, let's walk in, the family promise. So as you enter, this is our reception area. So this is the reception desk that we currently have, oh, I would say at least five volunteers that come during the week, Monday through Friday. And this is who you'll be greeted by here at the reception desk. This will be the lobby area. And then as we continue, on this administrative side, this is our executive director, Marilyn Kersmierski's office. So this will be her office right here. This will be my office, case manager. And my role specifically to work with the families. Currently, we have two families in the program. This building and our shelter can serve now up to six families. And then this is our operations manager, Lisa Garman's office. We have a storage area. So this will give us an opportunity to have room for storage. And then this is the administrative work office um, station for us to store, you know, paper, Xerox machine, printer, that kind of thing. And then we have our administrative restroom right here. All right. So that is the administrative side. Again, this is the reception desk area. And then we can't forget Amanda's office, our financial advisor. So Amanda will also be out here in this area and this will be her office, which we're currently, we've got some of our couches for the uh, living room that we'll be showing you. And then we have our conference room. So as you know, we have a board of directors. So when there are meetings, 
with Marilyn and her board of directors, then for Family Promise, this will be where they have um, these meetings. All right, so that is the administrative side. So I wanted you to kind of see the operation. Um, if you were to come in, you'll be buzzed in. So there is security in this building. Um, and then we're us, there's four people on staff at Family Promise that will be here to greet you, to help you in any way. So this is the administrative side. So are there any questions about this side? And then we'll move into the actual shelter um, for our families. If not, let's go, let's go. Cause this is what it's all about, right? So let's go. So this is the entrance to the family residence hall. So as you can see, it goes all the way down and then we're gonna take you into some of the, the things. But before we do that, I just wanna point out this. So as you will see, as we go on our tour, you will see placards like this will say our dining room. Each of these rooms was graciously adopted by various churches or organizations. We currently are having plaques made that underneath each of these plaques, it'll list who, which room was adopted by. I believe WCPC adopted a um, guest room. And so I can just show you as far as underneath this placard, then your, um, it'll say who the room was adopted by graciously for, 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 for doing that. All right, so let's go into the dining room because this is where all the, the stuff takes place, right? Gotta have, you gotta, gotta eat. So this is our kitchen. This room will house all the tables. So we'll have tables. Um, I believe they did square tables so we could put them together if we needed to. Um, and then all the storage. So you'll see the storage, the fridge. And then on each side, I'm gonna pan out so you can see, cause they're the same. So the door that Amanda just opened, there's a pantry and there's one on each side identical. So, these will be the pantries for the families when we have the, the food. All right. And then they're still working on it. I told you we're not quite ready yet, but you will see this is where the dishwasher will go. And our sink, again, more cabinet space. This area right here is for serving stations. And so our kitchen is not equipped to be to cook. So you will not find an oven in our kitchen. What we have purchased are kind of warming stations. So when a church, um, host church brings food and or a community organization, we will have um, warming stations placed on this table right here in front. And so the room, the food can keep hot. Um, so that's how we will be serving um, the meals. Over here, again, more cabinet space and then an ice machine. And then, like I stated, this door here is the same as the other uh, one side as far as the pantry. And then again, more cabinet space to hold all the stuff that, you know, that kitchens need. I think that that's gonna be there. I think they should, that's gonna be there, yes. So what questions, so I can pan out so you can kind of see. So the one thing I do wanna talk about meals. Um, so I know I used to coordinate meals for, for um, my church when I was the coordinator there. And a lot of times I had big Sunday school groups that would come in and um, eat with the families. Um, our area here is probably a little bit more restricted. We wouldn't be able to have large groups, um, but we're asking anywhere from two to four volunteers to come set up you know, these warming stations um, to help serve the food to the families, which again, we can have up to six families. Currently we have two, but we will eventually get to six because the need is great. Um, but that will be uh, kind of how the meals will work. Um, so any questions in regards to that? It looks like Tammy has a question. And then uh, it sounded like uh, the Hendricks crew had uh, somebody there had a question. All right. Uh, <clears throat> will you have microwaves yes there will okay. be microwaves they're not in yet but yes we will have microwaves and then warming stations yes okay okay um hendrix crew uh 
This question okay. was asked. <laughs> um, uh, my question is the warming stations. How are those? How are those powered? Are those like sterno uh, chafing dishes, or or what? What what's the? How how do those work? So I think it's a combination of both because they put in. You'll see here also on the back. They have the electrical outlets here. So I believe it's a combination of both that we're going to have because they have been ordered and they are currently at our temporary offices right now in boxes. Um, but yes, so we do have the capability with, with the electrical outlets. And just the evening um, meal will be provided by volunteers? Yes. So that's what we're still asking is that the um, host church congregations and or community organization that yes, that they still provide the evening meal. Um, you know, like I said, two to four volunteers coming in to provide the meal and then to serve it um, here um, in the dining room. I know when when host organizations, churches, whatnot have hosted, they provided the, they filled the pantry with like breakfast goods and and goods for the families to prepare lunches to go. Yes. Uh, would that be something that we would, uh, as as a host organization, we would we would need to be thinking about, or or is that something? separate. Yes. Nope, nope, we would still like that too. So communicating with um, the case manager and or operations manager so that the previous week, who whatever church or community organization was there, um, we can communicate with you during that week saying, okay, it looks like we're going to need, you know, two gallons of milk or, you know, oranges, because what we don't want is for you to purchase a bunch of stuff that may go bad, right? We want to be good stewards of everyone's, you know, money and time. And so um, for sure, if you were to reach out to Family Promise and or um, the last you know, host church coordinator, um, then that's something that could be provided to them. So that yes, that again, being good stewards of everyone's time and money. Um, but since us, the administration is on site, that makes it easier for us to do, right? So, I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with someone calling me and saying, hey, we're hosting beginning Sunday, um, what's it look like? And we can easily get right back to you and advise you, hey, look, it looks like we might need, you know, X, Y, and Z. Pop-Tarts have been going really fast this week or whatever. <laughs> yes, exactly, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, looks like Tammy has another question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 is there bins in the, um, that you can put in the pantry? pantry. So good question. So I know um, we're creating wish lists as we speak. So we have um, wish lists on Amazon, Target, and Walmart that we're working on. And so correct, we may need um, bins. I don't know exactly if any has been ordered yet, um, but it definitely might be something on our wish list because yes, to keep this pantry yeah, neat okay. and orderly, you're correct. That might be something that we need to, to look at. So thank you for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have a do you have a deadline for when you will um, have those wish lists on online? So I, I know we have an Amazon wish list that I did prov um, provide Michelle. I think a link on the Amazon. Um, we are currently working on the Target and Walmart. I think Target might be fairly close. I know Walmart. We're still working on it. Um, I think we focused on the Amazon wish list for. Um, towels for the bathroom, bath mats, things of that nature. I think our target wish list we're focusing on actually a lot of stuff maybe for the kitchen, some of the paper products. I mean, as we all know, we're still dealing with COVID. So a lot of things we may be um, not necessarily, although we have this dishwasher to come in here, we at the beginning might still be using paper plates, paper forks, and things of that nature um, right now. Right. But yes, we do. We do have real plates too. We did have those ordered and we do have those in stock. So we have those as well. It's just that we're trying to be mindful of us still being in COVID times. I have a question. Yes. Um, will the wish list, or will they be, excuse me, will they operate like a, reg, a regular registry on Amazon and, and Target and Walmart? In other words, when gifts are purchased, it will show up what the need still is or whether that category has been filled. Correct. Yes. Okay, so the great. wish list will say yes, exactly. Yep. All right. Well, let's go. Any other questions about meals or the kitchen, the dining hall? So let's move to our 
guest rooms. All right, so this is guest room number one, as you can see. And as I stated, each room will be noted um, which uh, room was adopted by whom. Those placards are currently being worked on and being ordered. So this is a guest room. So when you walk in, we are gonna have four single beds in these rooms. They will then have their own closet. And it's fairly big. So that they have the room for storage to hang up things and that kind. Um, you know, windows to let in the sunlight. And then their bathroom, they get their own bathroom, which consists of the sh a shower, storage up in here, storage here, and their sink. So that's how the setup is for guest rooms. Any question about the guest room? Okay, I'll continue down the hallway so y'all can kind of see a, a, a few of them. There's, like I said, there's six bedrooms. So we'll show you the laundry room. So this will be the laundry room on this side. Turn the light. So this is our laundry room. So it has room, again, storage. And then we have three washers and then we have three dryers. So that there's plenty of, you know, availability to wash clothes on site. Um, Cause we all know, you know, that's a pretty, a pretty big deal. This is another guest room, just to give you an idea. So again, you're walking in, this will house four single beds, depending upon, you know, the makeup of the family. Um, some of them might be able to be able to be more. And then this room, the bathroom's on this side. Again, storage here, there, and then the shower. And then their walk-in closet. I see someone has a question. Uh, yes, I see you have a thermostat in each room. Is it individually controlled? Is it individually controlled, the heating? Yeah. And, there is a controller. Yes, I can show you here. So yes. So individually controlled, um, so. And then each room, I can show you how they will work. When a family enters the program, they will be given a code to their room. Um, and that is how they will enter the room and their belongings will be kept safe. But we need a code so that the case manager also has that code in case we do need to enter the room. So that is how the, the codes will work on the doors. This is guest room three. So it's a little bit different. Some of are a little bit different. This one actually is pretty larger. So if we actually get a family, you know, that's uh, more than four, this is actually probably one of our larger rooms um, that we're able to accommodate. Cause you know, as you well know for hosting for so long, some families dynamics might be six, seven people. So we have that capability. And again, a walk-in closet in this one where you actually, you know, walk in, Again, controlling, and then their restroom. Now, as we continue down the hallway, there's more. So this is the host room, so we can talk about this. So again, this is the host room. So um, when we walk in, this is the host room, it's for two single beds. So this is where host will be. And then there is a bathroom hooked up to here, but there is no shower. So it is a sink and um, the restroom. So that is how the host room is set up as well as 
being able to control the temperature in the room. Um, so for those of you that I've hosted before, um, as you well know, each church is different. Um, my church, in fact, I'm gonna turn this around so you can see me. So, so hosting may look different in the future. Um, currently, we still are the same model as far as having host congregations to bring in, you know, host. Um, but we are looking to possibly change that. Um, so I just want you to be aware, but um, currently it is the same, operating the same way at this time. Any questions about the host room? All right. Around. Continuing down the hallway, this is guest room four. Again, probably larger than those first two that we showed you. Again, the bathroom and the closet. So again, depending on the families that are coming in, um, the case manager can, you know, help put them in the, the right room. We are gonna try to stagger families as much as possible, but it may not be. I mean, again, the, the need is great, so we'll, we'll make it work. This is the, gonna be the living area. So when families come in, they're gonna be checking in through this door. So they will be given a code to be able to come through this door. Um, and then this will be the living room for the families, which we have couches that you saw in that other room. Um, and this, the TV will go on this wall, 72 inch TV. So there should be plenty big for the families, but this is where they can congregate, relax, kind of come together as a community um, in this area. This is guest room number five, which is ADA. So if we do have a family that is in need of that, this is the room um, that will take care of that. So it's all ADA compliant with uh, shelving being lowered. And as long as in the bathroom also with the things being lowered. And then that would be the, the shower area. So being everything being ADA compliant. And then the cabinets are also lowered. Okay. And then this is the last guest bedroom. So this is guest bedroom six, again, also ADA. So we have that capability, um, making sure that everything is lowered. So the shelvings are all lower. And then the bathroom, this one actually has a tub. The other one had a shower as you saw. So this actually has a tub with all the necessary handrails. And again, the sinks. And then another exciting area is going to be a computer lab for the kids. So when the kids come back home from school, they've got homework, things to do. This room will be set up with computer stations. So we've got one, two, I think there's gonna be four computer stations, four desks that we're gonna put in here for kids to utilize and have some computers set up for them. And then there's a window here. So if they're, you know, mom or dad or both, or in the living room, they can still you know, look after them and see them in here. And that's Family Promise. Absolutely fantastic. Let's get those wish lists to get it stuck yeah. right away. <laughs> can I just remind everyone again about the uh, Love Your Neighbor Day projects here at the site. Um, so if you're interested, please sign up. Um, the uh, wish list hopefully will, um, uh, the link will um, go out on, uh, they'll be put in the life of the church. And are they gonna be, will that be on, on the website too, Michelle? The links to the wish lists? Um, I guess we could put it on their webpage. I mean, the 
the page where we say family promise. Okay. But I'll, I'll send it out. 